What's up guys, it's Nick here. So I have a really important topic I wanna to talk about today, and that's picking one product. An in insurance or whatever you sell, pick one product and master that product. So most businesses, no matter what they are, really specialize in one main product, that is their base. Everything else is an add-on. So I sold home improvements before this. My base product when I started was fences. And then I went on to decking, patios, screen rooms, everything that went with the exterior hardscape. After that, I learned how to sell roofs. That was our base product. And then we sold windows and doors, and eventually solar. That, find out your base product. Now insurance, my base product is Medicare. I don't care if I don't write them any other product. I want to, and I'm gonna ask to, but my main concern is the Medicare. And depending on how they are in the appointment, I may not even bring up the other topics because it's not worth you know, having any issues with compliance or having any issues with the person. You know, If they're not interested in anything else, then that's all we're gonna talk about. There you go. Have a base product, but that could be anything. It could be final expense, it could be car insurance, you know, it could be annuities, whatever. Pick your base product based off what you like and what you can sell a pretty frequent amount of. You need to be making sales constantly for it to make sense. So that's why I always say like annuities is great. I know guys that that's all they sell, but they also understand that they may only write two or three annuities a month or less or more. And you have to be able to survive on that where I can write one, two, three, four, you know, Medicare accounts every day. So it gives you more volume of people to see. The other reason I say be an expert at one product is because that kind of gives you a go-to product that no matter what happens, you can always come up with a sale or come up with something or help someone because you're an expert at it. If you only know a little bit about the topic, you're really gonna struggle when they have difficult questions or they have difficult needs. You know, for example, you know, I live in the Tampa area. If you said, Nick, I need some at-home help, I would know exactly which plan I'd recommend because a few plans offer it, but a few plans are hard to use or that you know they don't offer it in certain areas. Or if they said, hey Nick, I really need a food card. Well, they don't have Medicaid. Well, there is an option that they can get a food card, but you gotta know exactly what that is and be able to trans, you know, be able to come up with that. Same thing with insurance, you know, final expense. If they say to me, yeah, Nick, like I have a lady right now I'm going to see. She's on oxygen, she has a heart issue, and she's been in the hospital, you know, like two years ago for something. Well, I know I'm gonna probably need some kind of guaranteed issue product because her health is really bad. I know that. I can't screw around with you know, simple standard products because they're not gonna approve her for underwriting. She needs to have something strong and potent that you know, is probably not gonna pay me very much and it's gonna be expensive, but it's gonna guarantee issue for her. A little expert knowledge like that comes from focusing just on one product all the time. It makes it very simple for you to, number one, come off as an expert because you are one. You know, that's what I always tell people. It's like, have you ever heard that, you know, guys that are five foot nine always tell people they're, you know, they're six foot tall or they're five foot 11. It's hard to be, you know, it's hard to be six foot tall when you're not, but you can be an expert no matter what, and whatever your field is, but you have to be an expert, know things about it. And the fastest way to do that is to get experience, to run appointments, see situations that are tough, see situations that are difficult, deal with people that need something in particular. Very simple. And it will increase your, your ratio of knowledge quickly because now you're researching very specific things. You know, you're calling around, you're asking people questions that you'd never think of asking because that never came up before. So another example I like to use for that is like in the solar speed, in the solar world. Well, I knew everything there was to know about roofs. So when I got into solar, I could look at their roof and say, hey, you know, Mr. and Mrs. Customer, your roof is really rough looking. Probably want to get a new roof too so we could install the solar and we'll bundle it together. Well, if I had no roof knowledge, I wouldn't know to say that. I wouldn't know to bring that up. So then when the solar crew gets out there, they're going to look at the roof and be like, man, this roof sucks. We can't put solar on this. And instead of killing your deal, I just increased the deal size and made myself and the company more money. And I protected and served the family better because now they can wrap that loan together with solar and not have to come off that money and get their solar credits and all that shit. 
It was like, it, like you know, I saw the matrix. Like, oh, being an expert at something helped me over here. That's what I'm saying to do in your sales career. So no matter what you sell, work on becoming a subject matter expert. So if you sell dental equipment, if you sell cars, if you sell you know, safety equipment, you sell insurance, it doesn't matter. Work on becoming an expert in the field. The best way you can do that is whatever the product is, call the manufacturer. Call the manufacturer. Call the people that make the product and say, hey, I need all the information on this. And they will happily send it to you. Most of the companies today that sell products or services have service reps. Now, you probably are one of those service reps, depending on what it is, but someone else services your product at a higher level. Call that person. So, for example, like Hardy Cement. Shout out to them, Fiber Cement. They make siding. I went on a tour of their factory. It was in, like, Nevada. It was cool as shit. I learned everything there is to know about Fiber Cement on that tour so that I was ready when a customer asked me a question about it. I knew what to say. And it goes with it goes for that with everything. Like I have a friend of mine that sells uh, orthopedic surgery. He sells like uh, fake kneecaps. You know when they do a knee surgery, he sells that product. He knows everything there is to know about a knee replacement surgery because they educated him. As soon as he raised his hand and said, "I need more information," they're sending him all kinds of stuff on it because they want him to sell the product. They want him to sound educated when he speaks to a doctor, you know, a surgeon who is like, I want to replace a knee, but I don't know which brand of titanium knee replacement joint I should use. Well, he's literally sitting there like, well, we have three that we offer, and this is the reasons and why I like this and this and this. That is how you make sales. You have to be able to educate someone based on what they need. So it doesn't matter if you have all this information. If you can't apply it, it means nothing. It's also why someone who's not a perfect expert will make more sales than someone who's an incredible expert, but doesn't understand the concept of what the customer needs. So from my standpoint, it's much easier for me to tell you to become an expert first and then teach you how to apply it versus the, you know, the inverse of, oh, you're an expert salesperson and you could apply all this knowledge. Now we have to get you knowledge. Let's get you the knowledge first. You'll feel more comfortable in it. And then I could teach you how to be a good salesperson. Very simple. That is teachable. Cannot teach you the ins and outs of whatever you sell because I don't know about it. If you said to me, yeah, Nick, I sell insulin pumps. I'd be like, well, I know it pumps insulin. That's cool. I know I could sell them, but I don't know much about them. You have to do that legwork so that I can then help teach you become a better salesperson. How to overcome the objections. How to find the, the pain points for the customer who's buying it or needs it. That's where I step in to help you. So follow along, follow below. I'm, I'm taking uh, inventory of my journey through selling insurance and building out my own agency. I'm taking a huge step forward in posting content that basically gives away my playbook of everything I do to make sales and in volume for various products. I'll do any anything you guys wanna see, send me a comment below, subscribe, shoot me an email. If you want to join my team, the Aging Benefits Advisory, we are growing. We are currently recruiting. We sell insurance, Medicare, final expense, all that kind of stuff. But if you want help with sales in particular, comment below, what do you sell, where you sell it, and what is the problem? What's the sticking point? Why aren't you making more money? And I will help you attack that for free for the first five people that comment below. So follow along. We're out to make some money and we're going to help some people.